Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven, and today I would like to explain to you the difference between a SharePoint list and a SharePoint library. Uh, too often I hear this question from my uh, loyal blog followers and clients, and there seems to be a lot of confusion about this terminology. So I would like to explain to you what a list is and uh, what a library is, and then explain to you the uh, key differences between the two. Uh, let's start with a list. A list is essentially an Excel table in SharePoint. All right, you obviously know what Excel looks like. Uh, well, imagine now that it's in SharePoint. It's a table, it's a rows and columns of information in SharePoint. And very, very important, it's a rows and columns of non-document information. All right, just like in Excel, you have rows and columns with um, some data, some text, some numbers, um, you know, drop down choices, etc. Well, in SharePoint, we call it a SharePoint list. Uh, at least that's the official name uh, of the web part that allows us to do that. And what you see right now on the screen is an example of a SharePoint list. Uh, again, you know, you see rows and columns informa of information, and this happens to be a list of projects that I maintain in SharePoint. So I have a column for project name, uh, which, by the way, links uh, to uh, to uh, another site, a project site. All right. Uh, and then I also have, uh, let's come back. I also have a column for project manager, type of project, status, client, etc., etc. And, of course, uh, we can uh, add additional columns. We call it metadata in SharePoint um, uh, in, in addition to the ones we have. And if I add a new entry in the in my table, in my SharePoint list. I mean, this is what the input form uh, looks like. All right, so that's a SharePoint list. Let me show you another example uh, over here. Uh, here, just another example of a sh uh, another SharePoint list I built in SharePoint. This happens to be a risk register for my uh, projects. All right, so this is where I capture all the risks, possible risks uh, associated with the project. Same thing, rows and columns of information, same you know, kind of input form. All right, so that's a list. Everything I showed you so far, that's, um, you know, this are SharePoint lists. Uh, however, what if you need to organize documents? Well, this is why we have something called a SharePoint library. And when we, when somebody tells you library, uh, what, we mean, what we mean by this, a SharePoint document library. All right, N now think about a document library uh, as a list for documents, all right? Uh, essentially, it's a it's a special web part, uh, just like a list web part. It's a special web part in SharePoint that allows you to organize documents. Just to show you a few examples, here we go. Uh, this happens to be my sales department site uh, with all the different web parts. And one of the web parts that I have, and by the way, this is like the most frequently used web part that is present on each and every uh, site is a document library. Again, uh, rows and columns, right? Just like in a, share, a SharePoint list, but this is where you upload your documents. This is the web part where you upload your documents and um, and store all the uh, you know information um, uh, it, it, you know in the form of uh, documents, right? Uh, files and folders. Okay. Uh, just another example, uh, and of course when we uh, have, when we have, uh, uh, you know, a document library, when we organize documents in a document library, uh, we um, we can do many other things um, in terms of file management, like metadata, right? Um, just like you see here, I can tag my documents. Um, think of them, you know, again, you know, remember what I told you a little bit earlier, think of a document library as a SharePoint list for documents, right? Instead of, you know, kind of uh, rows, uh, that you would have in uh, in Excel with uh, some data, right? Uh, with some text and numbers, you know, you obviously have documents, but again, we, you know, we have the uh, the metadata columns uh, as well here, all right? Uh, now, uh, one thing, a couple, well, a couple of other things I want to, um, uh, to show you. So, um, a SharePoint list actually does allow you to attach documents to it, all right? Uh, if I click the new tab and you know I have all my different choices in here right uh, at the at the bottom you see the option to add attachments 
and uh, you can actually attach uh, multiple documents uh, you know maybe some files related to this particular line item some images etc uh, now while this is uh, a possibility this is something I really don't encourage you to do um, why because the documents you touch here they don't have the um, they don't you know take you don't take advantage of all the wonderful document management features that we have in a document library a document library right just like I showed you over here a document library is a special um, you know web part special list for documents and when you upload documents here you enjoy the benefits of all the wonderful uh, document management features um, like you know metadata, version history, co-authoring, and you know etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, when you organize, if you decide to attach your documents uh, to some row in uh, a SharePoint list, you obviously um, do not have such capability. All right. Uh, so, uh, long story short. Um, if you need to organize documents, if you need to store documents in SharePoint, kind of have a repository for documents, by all means, this is exactly why SharePoint has a, a, a document library for us. All right. Um, now, in some cases, you might uh, obviously utilize the attachment capability on the SharePoint list. Uh, maybe you are using the SharePoint list to uh, build, like, let's say, uh, I don't know, a help desk ticketing system, right, or something. Uh, or vacation request form, and you might want to attach, uh, you might want to attach uh, maybe some supporting documentation or something, right? In that case, you you might. Uh, this is kind of an exception to the rule. In this case, you might allow the attachments. But anytime you need to manage documents, uh, organize documents, uh, share them internally, externally, enjoy all the other benefits you have uh, of uh, document management, uh, you obviously need to organize them in a doc all these documents in a document library. Uh, now the last thing I want to explain to you is how do you uh, how do you uh, create those um, you know custom lists and document libraries. So first of all, when you create a site, when you create a let's say a brand new team site, communication site, or any other type of site, you already have one document library by default. That's kind of a default. Every site has at least one document library already. Uh, now in case if you want to create additional additional libraries. Uh, let me show you how uh, all lists. Uh, let me show you how that is done. So you navigate to the uh, you navigate to the uh, gear icon site contents. We need to go to site contents area. Oh, here we go. And as you can see here, I already have uh, this is my default library. I already created a bunch of you know lists, uh, right? As you can see here. So we're going to create. I'm going to show you how to create your own custom one. So. If you want to create an additional library, you just click New, click Document Library, and um, you know you just give it a name and hit Create. All right. So and now you end up with the document library, nice and easy. All right. Uh, think of a document library as a kind of a, a filing cabinet, electronic filing cabinet between, um, uh, well, for your documents. It's like a middle layer between a site and a folder. All right. Uh, just like in your office, you might have some uh, some some file and cabinets where you maybe organize uh, some you know files and folders. Well, a document library is an electronic file and cabinet. All right, for your documents. Hopefully, uh, this is nice and clear. Uh, all right, now how do you create uh, a custom list? A uh, couple of options available to you. So, if you need uh, to create like your your own custom list with um, you know your own, I guess, metadata, right? Uh, you know, columns of metadata. Uh, then what you would do is in the same drop-down menu, click New, hit List, and uh, again you will just uh, uh, create. Uh, let's just say something like this. All right, uh, vacation requests. I'm creating a list, and you end up. Uh, pre this is what you end up with. This is a. A custom list that we created. Obviously, it's empty and obviously it does not have any uh, custom metadata, right? Uh, it just has this uh, default title column. But of course, you can now create uh, create additional um, columns um, with different column types. And I actually documented step by step instructions on my blog uh, on how to create a custom list in SharePoint. So feel free to check it out. Uh, so that's option number one as far as creating custom lists. Uh, if you, what you can also do, you can also utilize some of the built-in 
custom lists. Um, so let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, you can either click on gear icon at an app, or if you go to the site contents area, just so that it's consistent um, in, terms of, in terms of the steps, hit new app. And what you end up with is this list of apps that um, um, exist out of the box. Now, most of these apps existed in old, what we call classic SharePoint. And, um, it, you know, some of this web parts that you see here are actually kind of ready to go, um, ready to go list, SharePoint list. Let me explain to you what I mean by this. Uh, let me, for example, let's say I want to uh, create a list to organize my contacts. Well, option number one for me would be to uh, create a custom list, create my columns, metadata columns, just like I showed you a few seconds earlier. But option number two, I could utilize uh, a, a pretty much a prepackaged, a ready to go custom list uh, for me available over here. It's called contacts. So look at this. I'm going to create uh, a new app um, from the existing um, you know, choice that I have. Here we go, contact, and let's take a look at what will happen. Here we go, it created a contact list, all right? And let me click, look at this. It's also, it's a SharePoint list that already contains all the metadata columns that you might need in a contact list, like, you know, phone numbers and emails and, you know, last name, first name and, and all that. So it's a bit of a time saver. Again, this might not be necessary, right, if you want your own columns and everything, but uh, this list, um, Microsoft um, has decided to help us here uh, quite a bit, uh, and they created for us, all, you know, this ready-to-go um, custom, well, I guess they're not custom, uh, they're ready-to-go SharePoint list that already contain all the metadata columns that you might need for your um, you know, for your particular need. Uh, just to show you another uh, example of a kind of ready-to-go list. Uh, so contacts was one of them. Announcements uh, is another one. Uh, let me see which one I wanted to show you. Oh, issue tracking. That's a, a very common one. Um, issue tracking is a list that allows you to uh, it allows you to track issues, right? And um, here we go. Uh, I just created one. Look, let's open it up. And again, you, you kind of already have all the columns you might need for your, uh, for your issues. And of course, you can uh, customize, you can hide them, you can uh, create your own ones. Uh, but at least now you see um, I have a ready to go uh, list available to me. All right. So uh, very, very nice. Um, one last thing I, I want to show you is if I add another app, um, tasks list. A, a tasks list is is also a list uh, that allows you to uh, organize uh, tasks in SharePoint. And if you create that, let's take a look. All right, here we go. Uh, right here, right. Uh, yeah, I have apparently a few task lists. Uh, I think the one I created uh, right here uh, just now. Um, if you notice, it's this is what it will look like, and um, it, you know it's a list. It's a list of tasks. Uh, but first of all, the reason it looks different is because it's a classic look and feel. This is how it, the task list uh, looked for many, many years in uh, all the versions of SharePoint, um, and it's a list that allows you to organize uh, organize your tasks. All right. So let me just uh, uh, let me just create a simple task. And I'm going to fill my name in here. You can, of course, populate with additional information. Let's not worry about it. Uh, but look at this. It's a task list. It's a list of tasks. Again, rows of data, uh, rows and columns of data. Uh, but it has some special features and superpowers, right? You see this uh, nice timeline. Uh, you can actually integrate this with the Microsoft project uh, and manage your uh, tasks in there. Uh, I do have a, a separate um, uh, blog post and a video on my YouTube channel about this, by the way. But long story short, this is also a list. All right, this is also a SharePoint list. It happens to be a classic one, at least for now. Uh, maybe at some point it will be modernized. But um, uh, but at the end of the day, this is also a list for uh, uh, for your uh, for your non-document uh, contact. In this particular case, 
uh, tasks. All right. So the bottom line, uh, the bottom line uh, is uh, use lists to manage any non-document information. Um, you know, just some text. Uh, you know, rows and columns of information. Use document libraries and document libraries only if you want to manage your documents, files, and folders. All right. So hopefully, this clarifies the um, you know the the differences and the hopefully this resolves the confusion between SharePoint lists and SharePoint libraries. Uh, as always, uh, thank you very much for your attention and. Uh, I hope to see you again on my blog, SharePointMaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.